What's up everybody, it's Tyler with Mom's Basement MMA, and I'm running it back with my dude Ashton No Chance Coniglia. Ashton, man, how are you, dude? It's been a few months since we last spoke, and uh, man, shit's been going crazy for me, and I know it's been crazy for you, but uh, tell me what's up, man. How are you doing? How are you feeling? We got a big fight coming up, too, on the 4th. No, I'm feeling great. I'm feeling good. Uh, Weight cut's been going good. Training's been going good. I've been doing uh, cross-training with uh, Premier Combat Center, doing a been over there a few times doing MMA sparring because we don't have that over at my gym. We don't have enough MMA fighters over there. So if you went to Premier, did you run into uh, uh, Tanner at all? Yes, me and Tanner. We we, we, we had a couple of spar sessions together. So that's, that, that's super cool. So what's interesting is you're on right before him. He'll be on tomorrow. And then that's the order of the fight. Like you fight right before him, right? No idea how that order is going. Um, I know he's on the card with me. Mm -hmm. I'm a pro, so he might be fighting for me. I think he's making his debut, I believe. So maybe yeah. he maybe yeah. he is fighting oh, yeah. before you. Maybe, maybe he goes and then you go, or something like that. I don't know. But uh, for people who don't, for people who aren't in the know, we are referring to DCS seventy six. Um, that's a pretty loaded card. It's going to be in Nebraska on December 4th at the Pinnacle Arena. That's a big uh, venue. There's going to be a lot of people that show up for that. So, Ashton, I, I just kind of wanted to ask a little bit, like, in, in, in terms of preparing for your opponent, you're fighting a guy named Michael Aquila. I know him from uh, Legacy Fight Alliance. He has fought two very, very tough guys. And he kind of got smoked right away in both of his fights. Um, people will look at him. People will look at Aquila not knowing anything about him and think he's a can. And that's not true. Like, he's very, very good, and he's very, very dangerous, particularly on the ground. But you know a little bit about Micah, Michael Aquila, and I wanted to ask you a little bit, like, how do you know about him? And what do you think he, what is something about him that stands out to you? Like, can you tell people who don't know wh who we're talking about why this guy is dangerous? Michael Aquila, we fought back in 2017. Uh, it had to have been the summer of 2017. We fought on LFA. It was both our LFA debuts. And it didn't, very, it didn't last very long. I came in with a game plan to just box him, but I wasn't very comfortable with my boxing yet. So he, he, he I fell into, I took him down. I took him down. I wanted to wrestle him obviously. And I made that mistake by going to his guard and he locked in the triangle. Then the triangle wasn't working and he got my arm and he snapped it and my elbow ligament snapped in half. That put me out for a year and a half. So he, he was a blue belt then. Uh, and, of course, he is very dangerous. And he's even more dangerous now because he's a black belt now. And he's – obviously, he's earned that belt. He, he's no one to mess around with on the ground. Not even if you're a wrestler. You shouldn't mess with them on the ground. A absolutely and that was one of the key things i want to point in on it's like unless you know and do homework on this particular fighter you're gonna look at it and be like a ashton's fought tougher guys before um that's a matter for debate i don't think that's a clear answer this guy's very dangerous even though his record isn't that great but tell me ashton why are you feeling so good about this one and why this guy is this something is this a guy that dcs just threw at you is this somebody that you wanted can you talk a little bit about how the fight came together i've been trying to get this fight set up ever since i went pro again and we asked him twice um and he turned me down two times already since i've been pro so so you've been wanting this one for a while. I've been wanting this fight for a while. So is it because of payback? You want payback? Is that it? I, it is. Uh, I, I I haven't forgot about him snapping my elbow, and it's the when I really want to get back and get it on my pro record. 
So most guys, when it comes to a jujitsu dude, particularly a guy this freaking good, nobody would really fault you for running away from this guy or for ducking him, if we're being real. Like, if we're being real. Of course, fighters always have to talk a bunch of shit, like how how big and bad and tough you are. I get it, man. I, I totally get it. But I'm just saying there aren't a lot of guys out there that would get their freaking wing freaking snapped off and then want to fight this the same dude that just snapped their wing off again um <laughs> like why is it that you think he turned you down twice F- that's my first question i think he's just been watching me coming up like i'm um, uh back then i wasn't a great stand-up i was a great wrestler so he kind of set me up to for failure to take him down but now i think because i'm a good wrestler he, he's probably thinking of his head I can't take this guy down. If I can't get him on the ground, how am I going to beat him? If he can stand and fight, if his Muay Thai is really good as he says it is, and I can't get him to where I want him, how am I going to beat him? Are you surprised he's taking the fight? Like, were you kind of, like, shocked when, like, you got word from your management or whatever, like, yeah, man, the fight's on. Like, were you kind of like, holy shit, really? I I was very surprised when uh, my manager trained uh he's also the promoter of dc uh asked me if i'd want to fight michael quill i'm like i'm like yeah i do you know i do but is he really gonna accept the fight you know he's turned me down twice already and five minutes later after talking i he said yes that so is I'm, wow third time to charm huh <laughs> so you have to be ecstatic i think this is a really good it's a rare opportunity to run it back with a guy you fought as an Ami, lost to. You have developed a hell of a lot since then. You've become a complete mixed martial artist. Every single one of your fights that I watch, the opponents keep getting more and more difficult. And you're doing well. And I want to talk about a different difficult opponent. I briefly want to hit on the Tony Ortega fight. That was a fight that doesn't go your way. You fought this guy earlier this summer. He's amazing. Like, you guys are both amazing. Tony is very, very good. Um, And everything was even. Like, it's constant. Like, the pace that you guys put on was insane. You guys are scrambling back and forth. He's putting, he put you in a very nasty triangle choke at the beginning of the fight. How you got out of that, I don't know. But you end up getting out of that. You reverse position on him. You nail him with some sick ground and pound. And then at the end of the first, you lock in a rear naked choke on him. I know it was over his chin, but you could still choke out somebody like that. And you are very, very close to to finishing Ortega. I could feel it. I could feel him struggling, gasping for air. He was inches from tapping. And that triangle he had on me. It may have looked like he had it in deep, but I was sitting. I was sitting comfortable. I was squatting. I was sitting comfortable with my chin tucked. I. I that's kind of like I. I use that technique. Um, most guys they'll get me in a triangle. And they think they have it, but they don't. They're t- they're 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 forcing it now. They're tiring themselves out. And so you were trying to burn them out. I was trying to burn them out. When he had it, I was not fighting to get out. I was chilling. That's cool. Because it looked very bad. It looked very nasty. And I'm not going to lie. I saw that. And and I got a little sweaty because I was like, holy shit, this might end right when it starts. Or this might end. Like, this might be a wrap. And the fact that you were able to get out of it, uh, that says a lot about your composure. It says a lot about your uh, jujitsu abilities and your ability to... Um, fight off submissions i think that's a really important thing we when we talk about submissions we usually always slant to like you putting submissions on other people but when you can get out of that that's just as important if not more so the fight doesn't go your way and he sets it up really by a punch uh he throws a jab at you it misses he throws a straight at you that hits you that hurts i could tell and then he was able to kind of like set it up set uh set it up get a finish doesn't go your way and you look really upset at the end of it that's the only fight of yours i've seen where you really look like you were just like you took that l really bad it seemed like right away 
I can, I know how much that fight meant to you. We talked about it uh, going back and forth. It was for a belt, and like when your coach was talking to you after you lost, like what was he saying to you? Keep your head up. You did great. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll we we'll be we'll be back for the belt. Uh, we'll we'll get him next time. Was um, it a cup? Was it a difficult like few days afterward? It was. It, I really had to soak it in and really think about what happened. I I couldn't believe it. Yeah, honestly, I didn't. I didn't think it was gonna go that way, but it mm-hmm. did. It did. I mean, I never underestimated him, and he caught me with a good cross. And when I mean he caught me straight into my nose, mm-hmm. and once it connected, blood just started squirting everywhere, and I, I, I couldn't really like see, so I was more seeing the blood in my eyes. So, and he snuck in that rear and right under my chin, he, he got me, and I knew I was. I, I I tried to lean forward and go for the takedown. And I should have just fell back, right? The guard, but so when you yeah. watch that fight again, like, what are some of the things that stand out to you? Like, uh, I screwed that up. I I wouldn't do this, this, and this if I ever get an opportunity to take it back with Ortega. Like, when you look at that now, and all, and all the training, all the sparring that you've done since then, I'm sure you've put yourself in similar positions. So that's you're not going to get caught that way again. Like, what are some of the things that you do different today? Um, if I had to go back in that fight, um, my game plan, we were, we wanted to take him down and wrestle him, but if I could go back and change it, I would have stopped myself from trying to take him down. But I was so focused on taking him down Mm -hmm. that I was wearing myself out. That was the game plan. I should have just, I should have just stood with them and boxed them. So was your game plan to go for it, to shoot, get yeah, it, my, and then ground and pound, and then yeah, that was that your was game plan. okay, got it, got yeah, it. And so I kind of regret doing that. I kind of wish I would have just stood there and used my Muay Thai on him, and it would have would have it could have went a different way if I would have just did that. But you know, it happened. I lost. I accepted it. Um, I moved on, but. I have plans of seeing them in the 2022 uh, summer. Showdown. I hope I hope you get that opportunity. It was a really good fight. I wish I lived in Nebraska so I could have gone to that fight. Um, I did talk to Tony a little bit um, afterward. I just congratulated him. I anytime like people that are part of this community win or lose, like I always try to hit people up to be like, "Hey, man, I saw your fight." And and I will say this about Tony. He said a couple things about you, but they were all good things. He was like, "Yeah, Ashton's really tough." It was a good fight. Um, and then he said something else, but it, it was something like it was like an emoji or something like that. It wasn't a lot, but he did say, like, you're really tough and it was a good fight. You earned his respect, a testament really to both of you. Like, it was kind of refreshing talking to you about the fight. It was like, yeah, he's good. We're going to fight and we're going to see what happens. And it seemed like there really wasn't any beef or anything like going there, into the fight. Yeah, there wasn't. I mean, we talked in the cage after the fight and mm-hmm. he said, you're a tough fighter and I hope to fight. I hope we could fight each other again. That's and I said, of course, of course. We will. That That's super cool, man. Like it's, it's refreshing to, uh, t- to see that. Cause that's not really always the case. And, kind of flipping script and and going back to this fight on we talked about uh Aquila like snapping your wing and prior to this fight he's fought two dudes that are freaking insanely good uh Justin Wetzel he's a freak I how that guy's not in the UFC I don't know he's insane he's insanely good um fights out of team elevation seven and one he just buzzes through Aquila he fights Christian Natividad, one of the best. Now he's a flyweight. He dropped down because he's a small guy. Christian pieced him up too. And I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I'm not trying to be uh, to hate on uh, Aquila. Far from it. I'm just being honest. Watch those fights. It is what it is. He got starched two different times. Is your plan, Ashton, 
Well, let me re- let me ask the question this way. You're taking this fight because, and this is just me, you didn't tell me this, this is just me asking or pretending I'm you. If I'm you, I'm taking this fight because I think I'm going to be able to starch this guy on the feet just like those other two did. It may not happen the same way, but I know your Muay Thai is very, very good. If I were you, I'd be like, okay, well, there are a couple different ways I can attack this guy. My striking's good. Um, I can knock him out boxing. But if I can get him against the cage, like using my Muay Thai, I can knock him out with my knees, 100%. So this guy, obviously, you have a couple of different pathways. I could see you. I could see you winning. For him, I think he's got one pathway. He wants to take you down the ground, and he wants to do exactly what he did to you before. Why isn't that going to work this time? Why is because I'm not going to take him down because obviously his wrestling's not that great. Right. He doesn't have a shooting game. The way he gets guys on the ground is he pulls high guard. So he wants to get in close. Mm-hmm. So he probably does want me to clench him and take him to the cage so he can try and jump high guard. So we're going to avoid that. So I'm just going to circle him and break him down, break his legs down, whatever I got to do to stand up with him. But he's not going to get anywhere close to me. That is, um, so I bet you've been working a lot on your submission defense. You've been working a lot on probably your footwork. Um, I bet your cardio is absolutely insane right now. Um, can you tell me a little bit about, you and I have spoke a little bit before we were recording. I know you have some plans. I wanted to ask you, like, what are those plans? What do you have kind of going up uh, for well, you in the near future? After the Tony Ortega fight, it, I had to let it soak in, you know. Right. I had a lot on my mind. Jackson's Wings MMA Academy came to mind. I need to get out of Nebraska. I need to go somewhere. So... I applied to Jackson Weeks MMA Cap. You have to apply and get accepted and all this, you know. Send them all your links to your videos, your records and stuff. So I did. And they accepted me. And so that that was the plan. I've been planning that ever since. So I leave March first. And that was set before I even accepted this fight. So after this fight, March first, I'm getting in my car taking all my shit and I'm going to go live in Albuquerque, New Mexico for a while to train with some of the best coaches. So you're like, okay, so are you going to fight and train full time or are you going to find a job when you're down there? Like, how are you going to do all this? Um, right now I have a donation page set up on Facebook. That's helping me out. Okay. And I got, I got a few of my sponsors helping me out. And obviously this fight is just a bonus to get an extra check. Sure. And I'm trying to stay out there as long as possible. Yeah, I I train full time. I also work part time here in Nebraska. Right. So if I have to, I will get a part time part time job out there. Uh, obviously, Saturday and Sundays they don't have training, and I could work a Friday night, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday, Sunday job. You know, and at night and get some hours that uh, is a, a ballsy move man because you know what it just shows how dedicated you are to this game how serious you are about evolving and getting better you're only going to do that by put getting out of your comfort zone and fighting and training alongside some of the best mixed martial artists in the world when you told like your family when you told your friends the, just the people in your life that like no i'm going to albuquerque i'm going to I'm going to Jackson Wink. It's what I'm going to do. Were they supportive or was there a lot of like, are you sure? Like, oh, Jesus, we don't want you to go. Like, They were I'm... very happy. Really? That's amazing. I mean, my mom was very happy. My mom is the happiest I've seen her and says that I was going to do that. She doesn't want me to go. She wants me to, she wants me to go. She doesn't. But she wants me to come back. I'm like, mom, I'll come visit you. <laughs> yeah i'll come visit mom 100 I mean, percent. i have so much support on this move it's unreal um is there is there a uh person in particular that you're looking forward to learning from 
like in your weight class or maybe a 45 or anything like that because i mean take your pick i mean golly there's so many good athletes there's so there. many i've heard there's m many good glory kickboxer fighters there and a lot of good uh brazilian jitsu fighters there so and i'm very excited to go out there i grew up wrestling so they have some of the best wrestlers at their gym, and I'm very excited to put back, put the wrestling shoes back on and get after it and touch up my wrestling gym. That's and the one thing I'm very you, excited for. You are going to be in very great company. Uh, two friends of the show are already down there. They're in Albuquerque. They're Jackson Wink boys. And then we have Juan Adams, who's another good friend of mine. Um you know, I got I got three mom's basement guys at, at Wink, which is fantastic. I need to get some more though. I will though. I will for sure. You'll hook that up for me. You gotta get Jonathan Coney in on. I'll talk to him when I'm out there. Yeah, for sure, man. I absolutely will do that. Ashley, I wanna give you the opportunity. Tell me you you talked about you have a page that's set up where you're taking donations. What else do you have going on that people need to know about? Um, I have a online store uh, for my merch. I got long sleeve tank tops and hoodies. Um, the hoodies are thirty eight. Tank tops are twenty eight. The long sleeves are thirty. I think um, that online store is through my sponsor, uh, Savage Ruthless. They're based out of California. Um, and they, that dude. He's awesome. He set this up. The store closes Sunday at 11.59 p.m., though. So, everyone, get your orders in. This is the perfect time. It's going to go to a good cause. Uh, he is not using that money to uh, buy a platinum yacht or anything like that. He's using it to get down to uh, Jackson Wink and to get set up there. Any sort of support that you can give my boy here would mean a lot. And uh, even if... If you don't have any money, that's okay, but you can still share the link with others, um, and that's just as good. Ashton, I also want to give you the opportunity um, to talk about any of your sponsors or anything, um, any other shout-outs you want to do before we let you go. Uh, I want to shout-out Canigley Painting, my mom and dad's company. You know, they've been taking care of me my whole life. They brought me to this world even though it was by mistake you know <laughs> shit, shit happens but um i am the oldest out of seven kids six brothers one sister um they they helped me a lot um they're the reason why i w will be going because they're they're supportive and i want to shout out twin j transport uh, Scott Johnson here in uh, Omaha. He's he's been one of my biggest supporters. Um, he's given me a check for every fight, and he's helping me out with this move. Also, he also sp sponsors Jonathan Conian. So, and sponsors a lot of the majority of the Nebraska fighters. That's uh, great. Amateurs and pros. I want to shout out Mid America Mixed Martial Arts Academy. They've been pushing me through all my fight camps. Um, it's been great being there. I'm going to miss them when I go to Albuquerque. But you'll be uh, back. I want to shout out Kong and Water of Omaha and all the Kong and Water stores in the U.S. and the world. They're, they're around the whole world, not just the United States. They start in Japan. It's the only water I drink. Kangen water is life. It, it will literally change your life. It, there's nothing better to drink. Prestige worldwide. Uh, Ashton, always a pleasure, man. Look forward to speaking with you again once you're down in New Mexico. Everyone follow my boy. Uh, his contact information is going to be right underneath his uh, mug here. It'll be on the screen once you guys see it. And uh, the link for a store and where you can get that sweet drip that's all that's all there man so uh uh ashton always a pleasure dude yeah looking crisp baby hey <laughs> thank, you. thank you brother i appreciate having me on there again